Hello and welcome. We're giving a couple minutes for everyone to get signed in and then we'll get started with the meeting shortly. Hola y bienvenidos. Vamos a darles unos minutos para que todos entren en la reunión y después empezaremos. All right, welcome everyone to the second of two virtual public meetings on the revised draft supplemental environmental impact statement for near-term Colorado River operations hosted by the Bureau of Reclamation. My name is Meg Perry with SWCA Environmental Consultants and I'll be your facilitator for today's meeting. Before we go any further, I'd like to mention that we do have live Spanish interpretation available throughout today's meeting and I'm going to explain how you can connect to that Spanish audio. So if you'd like to listen to today's meeting in Spanish, look in your Zoom controls for a button with a little globe on it labeled interpretation. If you click on that, you should see the option to select Spanish as one of the languages, and that will allow you to listen to our Spanish interpreters uh, throughout the meeting today. I'm going to pause now so that our interpreters can share those instructions in Spanish for anyone who might like to join uh, and listen in Spanish today. Bienvenidos a todos a la segunda de dos reuniones públicas virtuales para hablar del borrador actualizado de la declaración de impacto ambiental suplementaria para las operaciones a corto plazo del río Colorado con el Buró de Reclamación. Soy Megan Perry y trabajo con la consultoría ambiental SWCA. Voy a ser la facilitadora para la reunión de hoy. Antes de empezar, nada más quiero mencionar que contamos con la interpretación en vivo en español para la reunión de hoy y les voy a explicar a quienes quieren escuchar en español cómo pueden acceder a esa audio. Para escuchar la reunión en español, ustedes verán en la pantalla de Zoom en los controles un icono de un globo terráqueo donde dice Interpretation o Interpretación. Hagan clic en ese icono y verán una lista de opciones donde eh, estará la opción de Spanish o Español. Hagan clic en esa opción para acceder el audio en español durante la reunión de hoy. Gracias. Thank you. For those listening in English today, no need to click anything. You can just remain as you are. So uh, with that, just a little bit of introduction to what's coming up in our meeting today. We will start with a welcome from the Bureau of Reclamation and then turn into presentation on the background for this process, an overview of the revised draft supplemental environmental impact statement or SEIS, the alternatives considered in that draft and a summary of the impacts analysis. Following the presentation, we'll have a few minutes available to answer clarifying questions from you all about the presentation. And I'll explain um, in a moment how to submit those questions. A 
few notes about the Zoom webinar environment that we're holding this meeting in today. As you saw when you signed in, the webinar is being recorded and we have quite a number of people potentially attending today. So we do have microphones muted and chat disabled, uh, but do watch the chat as we'll use that to share a few pieces of information that uh, you might want to reference throughout the meeting, such as links to project websites or information about how to comment. As I mentioned, you'll be able to submit questions throughout the meeting if you have clarifying questions on the presentation, and you can use the Q&A tool in Zoom to submit those. Um, so look for the two talk bubbles in your Zoom controls. If you click on that, you will see a place to type in your question and click Submit. And then the team here from Bureau of Reclamation can see your questions and will respond when we get to that Q&A portion of the meeting. All right. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Genevieve Johnson to share welcomes on behalf of the Bureau of Reclamation. Um, actually, first I'm going to share the, the welcome and introduction uh, video from uh, the Commissioner of the Bureau of Reclamation, Camille Klimnam Tutin, apologies, and then we'll turn to Genevieve. So uh, just a moment while I pull up that video. And just a note for those of you listening in Spanish today that you will likely want to mute the main audio for this video so that you can hear the Spanish translation clearly. Uh, so click again on that globe icon that's labeled interpretation and you can and select audio in order to uh, have the Spanish interpretation coming through clearly. Hello, I'm Camille klimlam Tutin, Commissioner for the Bureau of Reclamation. Welcome to the public meeting for the revised draft SEIS for near-term Colorado River operations. On October 27th, Reclamation released the revised draft SEIS, initiating a 45-day public comment period. The revised SEIS includes the Lower Basin State's proposal as the proposed alternative and incorporates recent hydrology data as well as the positive impact of system conservation agreements funded by President Biden's Investing in America agenda through the Inflation Reduction Act. The SEIS will provide the guidelines needed in the basin to prepare for and respond to potential drying conditions until the expiration of the 2007 interim guidelines at the end of 2026. The SEIS is a process, which is the focus of today's public meeting and is separate from the post-26 initiative that seeks to develop longer-term operating guidelines. The revised draft SEIS provides tools in both the upper and lower basins to protect critical infrastructure at Lakes Powell and Mead. The proposed action has been developed based on strong basin partnership. This reflects the collaborative focus of Reclamation's process to this point, in which we intend to continue with this public comment period. In developing the next management framework for the river system, the Bureau is committed to an inclusive and transparent process that enhances meaningful public engagement. Your input is vital as we work towards short and long-term solutions for the Colorado River Basin. We are seeking public feedback on the proposed alternative, expected impacts, and other issues within the scope of the document. The deadline for submitting comments is December 11th, 2023. On behalf of the SEIS team and Reclamation leadership, I thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to a productive exchange of ideas.
Thank you. I'll now turn it to Genevieve Johnson to introduce the Bureau of Reclamation team that's hosting the meeting today. Thank you, Meg. Hi, everybody. I am Genevieve Johnson. I am the project manager for the SEIS. Um, first, we'd like to provide some welcome remarks um, from Katrina Grants, who is the deputy regional director for the Upper Colorado Basin. Katrina. Thank you, Genevieve. Good morning. Good afternoon. I'm Katrina Grants, deputy regional director in the Upper Colorado region. I want to welcome you all and thank you for joining today's webinar on the near-term Colorado River Operations Revised Draft SEIS. And as Commissioner Tootin noted, this SEIS is incredibly important for the near-term operations of the Colorado River and the millions who care and rely on its resources. And as such, partner, stakeholder, and public involvement is critical to the success of this process. So thank you for your interest, your input, your engagement. Thank you for being here today. In advance, thank you for your comments and feedback on this draft. And lastly, thank you for your continued engagement and input on all Colorado River issues. So now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Dave Arend in the Lower Basin. Good morning, everyone. I am uh, David Arend, uh, Deputy Regional Director for the Lower Colorado Basin. On behalf, on behalf of Jackie Gould, the Lower Colorado Region uh, Basin Regional Director, I'd like to welcome you all to this public meeting this afternoon or morning. I'd like to thank our staff and partners throughout the basin who contributed to the draft, revised draft supplemental environmental impact statement. I would also echo the commissioner's comments concerning the collabor collaboration and would like to emphasize our commitment to protecting the Colorado River. As Commissioner Tootin said, the SIS is providing us tools needed in the basin to prepare for and respond to drying conditions until the post-2026 process develops longer-term operation guidelines. So the proposed edge action, which we, you will learn about more in this meeting, is a consensus-based approach to protecting critical infrastructure at Lake Powell and Lake Mead. The proposed action, which was submitted by the lower basin states in May of 2023, is a viable alternative that reduces risks of very low reservoir levels in the basin. It was made possible by the Inflation Reduction Act. We welcome your continued involvement in this process and look forward to your questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you, Dave and Katrina. Um, I'd like to now introduce the reclamation team who's on the call today to help answer your questions and who have been instrumental in um, not only preparing today's pre presentation, but the document that is out for public comment right now. If folks could please turn on their cameras. Thank you all. Right. And Meg, if we could bring up the presentation. Um, so we're going to start today with a little bit of background, a reminder of how we got to this point in time. And I'd like to introduce Megan Thiemann, who will go through this part of today's presentation. Reclamation's Office in Reclamation's Lower Basin Region. And we'll be providing some background for today's webinar. Um, so the Colorado River Basin is experiencing a historic drought with flows from 2000 to 2022 being the lowest in the past 120 years and one of the lowest in more than 1,200 years. From 2020 to 2022, we had three back-to-back -back dry years with inflows ranging from only 37% to 63% of average. As a result, the two largest reservoirs in the basin are both near historically low water levels with Lake Powell at just 37% of storage capacity and Lake Mead at just 34% of storage capacity. Next slide. So storage in Lake Powell and Lake Mead and the combined storage of the two reservoirs since 1960. At the end of water year 1999, when the drought and low flow conditions started, the combined storage of Lake Powell and Lake Mead was at 92% of capacity. During the first five years of low flow conditions, storage declined by half. For the next 15 years, there was some year-to-year -year variability, but the overall downward trend continued, even with a few high inflow years during that time. From 2020 to 2022, 
the inflow was well below average and storage declined by nearly half again from 45% to 26% of capacity. With the above average inflow in water year 2023, the combined Powell and Mead storage increased to 35% of capacity by the end of the water year. That is still low, and as we've seen in the past, year. Next slide. Megan, your sound is yep. coming in and out just a little bit, so I don't know if you can adjust your headset at all. Okay, I mean, sorry, does this sound better? That is a little better, yep. Okay. Um, this slide shows a cross section of Glen Canyon Dam with Lake Powell key elevation. Lake Powell is currently near an elevation of 3,572 feet. 3,490 feet is minimum power pull out. Below that elevation, water can no longer flow through the eight penstocks and turbines that generate hydropower, and water releases would solely depend on the river outlet works. Glen Canyon Dam was not designed to operate solely through the outlet works for extended periods of time, however, and doing so would put water deliveries at risk with potential adverse impacts to downstream resources and infrastructure. Below elevation 3,370 feet, no water can be released through the dam via gravity. This elevation is referred to as dead pool. The draft SEIS references elevation 3,500 feet, which is just 10 feet above minimum power pool. Next slide. This slide shows a cross section of Hoover Dam with Lake Mead Key elevations. Lake Mead is currently near an elevation of 1,065 feet. Elevation 950 feet is minimum power pull at Hoover Dam. Dropping below this elevation would result in a loss of hydropower at Hoover. In addition, because the reservoir drops more quickly at lower elevations, operating below elevation 950 feet and near Deadpool increases risk to water delivery and has potential adverse impacts to downstream resources and infrastructure. The bottom of Hoover Dam's intake towers is at elevation 895 feet, which is Deadpool at Lake Mead, or the point at which water can no longer be released through Hoover Dam via gravity. The draft SEIS references elevation 1,000 feet, which is just 50 feet above minimum power pool. Um, and with that, I'll now pass the presentation back to Genevieve Johnson to provide an overview of the revised draft SEIS. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Megan. Next slide. So we wanted to remind everybody um, of what the supplemental EIS is and why it's important. In November of 2022, the Department of Interior proposed development of the SEIS to supplement the 2007 EIS and interim guidelines. This was a response to the potential for worsening drought conditions and would modify these operational guidelines um, to inform water years through 2026. Um, as noted, the SEIS does not replace, supplant, or supersede the post-26 guidelines development process, which will focus on longer-term operations. Next slide. The supplemental EIS focuses on 2024 through 2026. This, again, is the remainder of the interim period. The focus is on addressing continued potential low runoff and low reservoir elevations, and it analyzes scenarios that react to those low level conditions, but doesn't predict the actual operations that will occur. It also doesn't change other operational agreements or contractual distribution of water within reclamation projects, and the focus is on Lake Powell downstream along the Colorado River floodplain to the international boundary with Mexico. Next slide. So how does the draft SCIS differ from other planning activities that we're doing in the basin? The near-term Colorado River operations, which is this interim um, guidelines SCIS, again, is focused on a limited section of the 2007 interim guidelines. It's focused on an annual releases and those are mostly focused, as we mentioned, on those low reservoir conditions and the potential for continued low runoff. And the duration is short. 
just three years from 2024 through 2027. You may also be familiar with the Glen Canyon Dam Long-Term Experimental Management Plan or the LTEMP SEIS. This action is limited um, to sections of the 2016 LTEMP Record of Decision. It focuses on sub-annual flows, which means those timing of hourly, daily, monthly, and experimental releases from Glen Canyon Dam. It's focused on 2024 through 2027 for flow alternatives and 2024 through 2036 for those high flow experiment protocols. We've also spoken a lot about the long-term Colorado River operations or the post 2026 process. This process will revisit all sections of the 2007 interim guidelines and other operating agreements that expire in 2026. It still has a focus on annual releases, but again, has a much bigger scope in terms of operations. It's also focused on a longer duration, 2026 and beyond. Next slide. So the draft SEIS was issued in April 14th, 2023, and it analyzed a no action alternative and action alternatives one and two. That was based on hydrology modeling from September of 2022. Since that time, we received a new proposed alternative, the lower division proposal in May of 2023, and we had improved Colorado River Basin hydrology. So we've updated the hydrologic modeling utilizing June 2023 hydrologic modeling, which shows a substantial risk reduction in reaching that critical elevation at both Lake Powell and Lake Mead. As a result, Reclamation withdrew the draft SEIS in May of 2023. We've worked to, up, um, to analyze that proposed alternative and use the updated modeling. And now before you is the revived draft SEIS. Next slide. As we updated the hydrologic modeling, we recognized that the lower division state proposal provided additional reduction in the percent of traces that both Lake Powell and Lake Mead could reach critical elevations while still achieving the same purpose and need objectives in the SEIS. This graph shows the percent of traces that Lake Powell could reach critical elevation 3,490 feet on the left, and the percent of traces that could reach critical elevations for Lake Mead on the right. The faded colors show the percent of traces that could reach these critical elevations in the old draft SEIS that used the September 2022 hydrology for the no action, action alternative one, and action alternative two, which were presented last spring. So for example, the light pink bar graph shows that no action alternative using the September 22 modeling has over 50% of traces where Lake Powell elevation could decline below elevation 3490 and over 50% of traces where Lake Mead could decline below elevation 1000. Using the updated June 23 hydrologic modeling, you can see that the risk at Lake Powell falls below 10% and the risk at Lake Mead falls below 5%. Similarly, for the old action alternatives one and two, the risk of falling below those critical elevations is around 10% at Lake Powell and over 40% at Lake Mead when we use the September hydrologic models. And some risk still remains even with the updated June hydrology. The proposed action, which is in blue, shows that the risk to both reservoirs is reduced comparatively. And so for these reasons, alternatives one and two were moved into the considered but eliminated from detailed analysis section in the revised SEIS. Next slide. So this slide provides a summary of key milestones um, as a reminder, we started this process in November 17th, 2022, with a notice of intent um, to develop the SEIS, which was published in the Federal Register. We had a public scoping period from November 17th to December 20th of 2022. 
We published the draft SEIS in the Federal Register on April 14th, 2023. In May, we withdrew that draft SEIS. Since then, as I mentioned, we've been working on the proposed alternative and revising the hydrologic modeling. And on October 27th of 2023, we published the revised draft SEIS. That started the public comment period, uh, which closes on December 11th. We expect to issue, issue a final SEIS and record of decision in spring of 2024. Next slide. During this public comment period, as mentioned earlier, we are seeking your feedback on all the alternatives that are presented, any draft impacts or missing impacts, and other issues within scope of the document. Next slide. And now we'll discuss an overview of the alternatives that are in the draft SEIS. Next. Again, we are only proposing to modify certain sections of the 2007 guidelines. This includes determination of Lake Mead operation and shortage conditions or section 2D, the coordinated reservoir operations and mid elevation release tier and lower elevation balancing tier which are section 6C and 6D, and the implementation guidelines and mid-year review, which is section 7C. Next slide. The revised draft SEIS evaluates two alternatives, the no action alternative and the lower division proposal, which is the proposed action. Although a single action alternative is not always preferred, the SEIS is supplemental and the issue specific, so it is reasonable to have fewer alternatives. Both alternatives present much lower risk of reaching critical elevations with the updated modeling. Again, as a reminder, the lower division proposal is the proposed action. And for all operations, the secretary reserves the right to operate reclamation facilities to address extraordinary circumstances. This includes operations that are prudent or necessary for the safety of dams, public health and safety, or other emergency situations, um, other unanticipated or unforeseen activities that could arise. Next slide. The no action alternative focuses on current operations, which means those would not change. And we would continue implementation through 2026 of the 2007 interim guidelines for operation of Lake Powell and Lake Mead, Minute 323 to the 1944 Water Treaty with Mexico, including the Binational Water Scarcity Contingency Plan, the 2019 Drought Contingency Plan, or DCP, for the Lower Basin, which includes those DCP contributions by the Lower Division states, and the 2019 DCP for the Upper Basin. Next slide. The no action alternative models the operational changes for both Glen Canyon and Hoover Dams. And this means for lower basin deliveries, the total lower division state shortages and DCP contributions are um, distributed according to priority. And that would be 200,000 acre feet below elevation 1,090 and up to 1.1 million acre feet below elevation 1025 at Lake Mead. For coordinated reservoir operations, below elevation 3,575 feet at Lake Powell, we would release 8.23 or 7.48 million acre feet. This is in the mid elevation release tier or we could balance those releases between 7.0 and 9.0 million acre feet and that lower elevation balancing tier, depending on the operating tier and elevations that are at both Lake Powell and Lake Mead. For implementation guidelines, we could do a mid-year review that could adjust Lake Powell operations up or down or reduce those shortages from Lake Mead, which would allow additional deliveries to lower basin water users. Next slide. Under the proposed action, we would 
We are modeling the same shortages and DCP contributions as the no action alternative, so that would stay the same. However, there is an additional total of 3.0 million acre feet of SEIS system conservation through 2026, and a minimum of 1.5 million acre feet would need to be conserved by the end of operating year 2024. For coordinated reservoir operations, these would be the same as the no action alternative, except we could reduce releases down to 6.0 million acre feet at Lake Powell if any minimum probable scenario in a 24 month study shows Lake Powell dropping below elevation 3,500 feet. Sub annual releases would comply with the LTEM and would not drop below those minimum flows. And the goal is to keep Lake Mead elevation above 3,500. Next slide. For the implementation guidelines, under the proposed action, if the April minimum probable 24 month study indicates the end of year elevation in Lake Mead could fall below 1,225 feet, the lower division states would have 45 calendar days to propose an implementable plan to protect Lake Mead from reaching elevation 1,000. If an acceptable plan is not developed, then reclamation may independently take action to protect elevation 1,000 at Lake Mead. Next slide. In the draft SEIS, we also have the alternatives considered but eliminated from detailed analysis section. And you could read more about these um, alternatives considered in that section. They consist of filling Lake Powell first, decommissioning Glen Canyon Dam or operating for run of the river, filling Lake Mead first, a one dam alternative, including evaporation, seepage, and system losses, an ecosystem-based alternative, a worst case drought alternative, hydropower prioritization alternative, importation of water, and the action alternatives one and two from the original draft SEIS. Next slide. I'll now turn it over to Sarah Baker, who will walk through our operational assumptions and scenarios. Thanks, Genevieve. So now we can go through our assumptions for the hydrologic modeling that we performed in the SEIS. So for both alternatives, we're using the Colorado River Midterm Modeling System, or CRIMS, and we're using the June 2023 version of this. Modeling compares alternatives and impacts using a wide range of low flow hydrologies, including conditions that were drier than the past 30 years. And these hydrologies come from the June 2023 forecast. For Glen Canyon Dam, operating tiers and releases are consistent with the 2007 interim guidelines. In the lower basin, shortage volumes and DCP contributions are consistent with the 2007 interim guidelines and the 2019 Lower Basin Drought Contingency Plan. Reductions in savings in Mexico will continue to be implemented per minute 323. Next slide. So now we can review the assumptions for hydrologic modeling that are specific to the proposed action. For operations at Glen Canyon Dam, as stated previously, those are consistent with the 2007 interim guidelines, but there is an additional protection of elevation 3,500 feet at Lake Powell. So how this occurs is that if Lake Powell is projected to be below elevation 3,575 feet, which corresponds in the, to be the mid-elevation release tier or the lower elevation balancing tier, then releases could be as low as 6 million acre feet while maintaining minimum L-temp releases with the goal of keeping Lake Powell's elevation above elevation 3,500 feet. In the lower basin, in the proposed action, there's an additional 3 million acre feet of lower division state SCIS conservation through 2026. This modeled 3 million acre feet of SCIS conservation is a combination of system conservation as well as creation of ICS or intentionally created surplus. 
modeled system conservation in the proposed action is 2,468,000 acre feet for 2023 through 2026. So that's the total volume over those four years. And those were provided by the lower division states. For our no action, those the volume of system conservation is consistent with the official June 2023 CRIMS run, which totals 665,000 acre feet of total system conservation for 2023 through 2026. So there's about a 2 million acre feet uh, more system conservation in the proposed action that is modeled. Next slide. So next we'll review the analysis of impacts. So this slide summarizes resources analyzed in detail in the draft SEIS. We will come cover some of these resources in this presentation, but all are described in detail in chapter three. These resources include air quality, biological resources, cultural resources, environmental justice, hydrologic resources, hydropower, Indian trust assets, paleontological resources, recreation, socioeconomic, visual re resources, water deliveries, and water quality. Next slide. Under the no action alternative, we could see a variety of impacts, which include critically low elevations at Lake Powell and Lake Mead. This could cause impacts to water deliveries and operational limitations. Additional impacts could be loss of hydropower production, flow limitations in the Grand Canyon, limited flow for ecological programs, reduced water availability to water users basin-wide, and U.S.-Mexico water treaty obligations. Next slide. So now we'll review the hydrologic resources. This includes an analysis of reservoir elevations and releases. Since the original draft SEIS, we have updated the hydrology and initial conditions used in the hydrologic modeling. When the SEIS process began, our analysis was performed using September 2022 initial conditions and hydrology. Based on comments, we updated the hydrology and initial conditions in the revised draft to June 2023, which includes the impacts of the wet winter in 2023. The results of that difference is shown in the figure on the right, which Genevieve went over. You can see from the light colored regions or bars to the darker colored bars, which represent the updated modeling with the June 2023 hydrology, there's a significant decrease in the percent of traces falling below critical elevations at both Lake Powell and Lake Mead. Next slide. So now we can go through the impacts to Glen Canyon Dam water year releases, which are shown on this figure. We're showing the annual water year releases from 2025, or sorry, 2024 through 2026. The no action alternative is in red, red, and the proposed action is in blue. The bar plot, plot shows the median from the uh, from the analysis, and the box plot that overlays the bar plot represents the range of different projections from the modeling. There's a legend on the bottom right that shows what this box plot represents. The box itself represents the 75th to 20th percentile from the modeling analysis, and the bot or the lines or whiskers represent the 95th to 5th percentile from the projections. The outliers are represented as dots. So you can see in 2024, the median projection from both alternatives is 7.4 million, 48 million acre feet release from Glen Canyon Dam and is the same between all, both alternatives. In 2025 and 2026, we can see that the no action alternative has slightly higher releases at the median than the proposed action. This is due to two factors. 
since Lake Mead is higher in the proposed action due to additional SEIS conservation, which we can, which we'll show in the next few slides, Lake Powell is projected to not release as much due to the coordinated ops between Lake Powell and Lake Mead. If Lake Mead is higher, then less water would need to be released from Lake Powell to balance the contents of the reservoirs when they're operated in a balancing or equalization tier. Additionally, in the proposed action, releases can be reduced down to 6 million acre feet to try to protect elevation 3,500 feet at Lake Powell. You can see this occurring in some of the outliers in the 2026 blue box plot region, which shows releases that go below 7 million acre feet in order to protect elevation 3,500 feet at Lake Powell. Next slide. Next, we'll go through the full range of reservoir elevations that are projected from both alternatives. On the left, we have the end of month pool elevations at Lake Powell. And on the right, we have the end of month pool elevations at Lake Mead. Here we're showing it the monthly pool elevations through December, 2026. The red region is from the no action alternative and the blue region is the proposed action. The solid line represents the median of the projection, and the dashed and the dashed dotted line represent the 10th percentile and the 90th percentile, respectively. The full colored region or cloud represents the full range of projected reservoir elevations. If we look at specifically at Lake Powell, which is on the left, you can see there's minimal difference between the proposed action and the no action alternative, especially through the end of 2025. In 2026, you can see that there are some minor differences in the percentiles due to differences in releases at Lake Powell. At the median, the proposed action is slightly higher than the no action alternative. And at the bottom percentiles, so the 10th percentile in the bottom of the colored region, which is the minimum projected pool elevation, you can see that the proposed action has higher pool elevations as releases are adjusted to try to protect elevation 3,500 feet at Lake Powell. If we look at Lake Mead on the right, you can see there are more differences between the projected pool elevations between the no action alternative and the proposed action. Starting at the beginning of the simulation, so in 2023, we're seeing increased pool elevations in the proposed action compared to the no action alternative. And this is due to the additional SEIS conservation that is part of the proposed action. By the end of 2026, you can see that the proposed action is approximately 15 feet above the no action alternative at the median. And you can also see that all percentiles show a slight increase in pool elevation for the proposed action compared to the no action alternative. Again, due to that extra system conservation or SEIS conservation that is occurring in the proposed action alternative. Next slide. To illustrate the continued need, despite good hydrology in 2023, Reclamation modeled plausible hydrologic scenarios from the Ensemble Streamflow Prediction or ESP traces. The example we're using to illustrate this is using climate, so that's temperature and precipitation data from the historical period of 1999 through 2002. This trace represents 2023 hydrology followed by three dry years. Reclamation modeled 80% of the 1999 through 2002 streamflow trace to provide a more conservative analysis. The table on the bottom left shows the Lake Powell water year unregulated inflow from this trace. We can see the percent of average as the top row and the water year volume in the bottom row. For 2024 and 2025, there are approximately 63% and 65% of average, which is similar to flows that we saw in the recent record. So similar to 2020 and 2022 unregulated inflows to Lake Powell. 2026 unregulated inflows in this trace are 
which is slightly below, but similar to the 2021 unregulated inflow to Lake Powell. So this trace has flows that, or similar flows to that, what we've seen in the preceding three years to the SEIS. Next slide. So next we'll go through the results for the no action alternative uh, for this individual stream flow trace. On the left, you can see we have Lake Powell. This plot is set up similarly to what we saw in the full range of projections in one of the previous slides. For this specific, specific trace, we're seeing that under no action, Lake Powell pool elevations slowly decline through 2026. And during mid 2026, with the declining uh, pool elevation, that causes the no action alternative to drop below elevation 3,500 feet, as well as 3,490 feet, which is minimum power pool at Lake Powell. And that no action alternative continues to decline because the minimum release from Lake Powell is 7 million acre feet in the no action alternative. At Lake Mead, you can see that the no action alternative declines through 2026, but does so in a slightly slower fashion than we saw at Lake Powell on the left. You can see that by the end of 2026, the Lake Mead pool elevation drops slightly below elevation 1,000 feet at Lake Mead in the no action alternative. Next slide. So next we can layer on the post action onto this individual stream flow trace analysis. At Lake Powell, you can see that the no action alternative and proposed action follow approximately the same pool elevation through the beginning of 2026. But in 2026, you can see that the lines diverge and the proposed action has a slightly higher pool elevation compared to the no action. This is because in the proposed action, there is uh, Lake Powell releases can be reduced to 6 million acre feet at a minimum in order to try to protect elevation 3,500 feet at Lake Powell. And that is what is occurring in this trace in the no action alternative. You can see that though it drops slightly below elevation 3,490 uh, feet or minimum power pool, it is much above the no action alternative by the end of 2026. For Lake Powell, you can see that from the beginning of the simulation, the proposed action has a higher pool elevation than the no action alternative. You can see that that difference tends to grow through the end of 2025, and there are some slight differences, uh, or the, the differences between the proposed action and the no action alternative through 2026 uh, decrease slightly due to differences in Lake Powell's release, but by the end of 2026, the proposed action is still above the no action alternative for Lake Powell and remains above, or sorry, Lake Mead and remains above elevation 1,000 feet. Next slide. So next we can summarize the results of reservoir elevations in a different manner. So here we're looking at the percent of traces that fall below critical elevations at Lake Powell on the left and Lake Mead on the right. For Lake Powell, we're showing the percent of traces that fall below elevation 3,490 feet any time during the water year for each alternative. You can see that in 2024, neither alternative has, ele has projected pool elevations below elevation 3,490 feet or minimum power pool. But in 2025, the no action alternative has approximately 1% of traces that fall below this critical elevation. In 2026, the no action alternative has a higher percentage of traces falling below elevation 3,490 feet at about 6%, while the proposed action does have some traces that fall below elevation 3,490 feet, but that remains low at approximately 2%. At Lake Mead, we're showing the percent of traces that fall below critical elevation of 1,000 feet at Lake Mead, 
during any time during the calendar year. Neither alternative shows this happening until 2026. In 2026, the proposed action, sorry, the no action alternative has approximately 4% of traces falling below 1,000 feet at Lake Mead, while the proposed action has about 2% of traces falling below 1,000 feet at Lake Mead. So you can see that when looking at critical elevations at Lake Powell and Lake Mead, the proposed action has lower percent of traces falling below these critical elevations compared to the no action alternative. Next slide. So next we can go through water deliveries. Here we're talking about the total water deliveries to the lower division states, as well as deliveries to Mexico. We're gonna summarize the results in this presentation, but for more detail, you can read chapter three of the revised draft SEIS. Next slide. So first we're gonna go through a summary of the model lower division state shortages, DCP contributions, and estimated SEIS conservation for the proposed action for 2023 through 2026 by Lake Mead elevation, which is shown here. We have the 2007 interim guidelines shortages in light orange, the 2019 DCP contributions in a darker orange, and the estimated 2023 through 2026 SEIS conservation in gray. You can see that the 2019 DCP contributions start when Lake Mead is projected to be low elevation to 1,090 feet at Lake Mead. And you can see that even at this higher elevation, the SEIS system conservation adds an additional 750,000 acre feet to that volume of uh, reductions in the lower division states. That 750 feet is added to all elevations. So you can see that is consistent from 1090 through the tier that is below 1025. Estimated annual SEIS conservation volumes in this table are used for comparison analysis purposes only and do not represent annual commitments by each state. Annual SEIS conservation may vary by year such that they're collectively totaled to 3 million acre feet that would occur through 2026. Next slide. We can also look at these volumes separated out by state. So this is showing the lower division state shortages, DCP contributions, and SEIS conservation by state for the proposed action. The far left column shows the Lake Mead pool elevation ranges for each tier. The 2007 interim guidelines shortages, as well as the DCP contributions are summed together in the orange column. And you can see that these are separated out by state as well as providing a total volume. So when Lake Mead is projected to be below elevation 1,090 feet, but above, above elevation 1,075 feet, this totals to be 200,000 acre feet. But when Lake Mead is projected to be below 1,025 feet, this is 1,100,000 acre feet. This is the volumes that are represented by the no action alternative. For the proposed action, we have additional SEIS conservation that is consistent for each elevation at Lake Mead. For Arizona, this is assumed to be approximately 280,000 acre feet. Nevada is 70,000 acre feet. And Nevada, or in California is 400,000 acre feet, added up to 750,000 acre feet total for the lower division states in the proposed action. You can add these two columns together to get the total shortages, DCP contributions, and SEIS conservation by state, as well as the total volumes that we looked at in the previous plot on the far right. Again, the estimated SEIS conservation volumes in this table are used for comparison purposes only and do not represent annual commitments by state. Actual SEIS conservation by state, as well as by year, may vary such that they collectively add up to 3 million acre feet of SEIS conservation to occur through 2026. Next slide. 
We can now go through the modeling results for the distribution of lower division shortages, DCP contributions, and system conservation that was modeled in the hydrologic modeling. These fig figures represent those volumes for the total lower division states on the far left, and then for Arizona, California, and Nevada for the right three figures. This set of plots is set up similarly to the ones we looked at for the Glen Canyon Dam releases. So we have annual volumes from 2024 through 2026. The left axis of each plot represents the percent of apportionment, and the right axis has the total volume of these uh, lower division state shortages, DCP contributions, and system conservation. The bar plot represents the median from the projection, and the box plot that overlays the bar plot represents the range of projections. If we look at the lower division state figure on the far left, you can see that the proposed action has a higher volume than the no action alternative for all years, with 2024 and 2025 representing about 20 or sorry, 17 percent of apportionment for the no proposed action, while the no action alternative has about 10 percent. In 2026, these volumes or percent of apportionment and volumes are slightly lower, but you can see that the no action or the proposed action is still higher than the no action alternative. The ranges of the box plots shows the differences in required shortages as well as DCP contributions that would occur from different uh, inflows and pool elevations at Lake Powell and shows the range of the projections for those uh, volumes of reductions. If we look at the next plot to the right, we're showing Arizona for the shortages, DCP contributions, and system conservation. For Arizona, again, you see that the proposed action is higher than the no action alternative for all years. In 2025 and 2026, this is approximately 32% of apportionment, while the no action alternative is approximately 26% of apportionment. And in 2026, again, the differences are slightly smaller because most of the system conservation occurs before 2026. For California, you can see differences between the proposed action and the no action alternative as well. The proposed action shows approximately 10% of this volume for 2024 and 2025, while the no action alternative shows a median that is close to 0% for these shortage DCP contributions and SEIS conservation. For Nevada, you can see that there's minimal differences shown in these volumes for the proposed action and the no action alternative. And this is because Nevada is participating in the SCIS conservation through creation of ICS, which isn't represented in this plot. So we don't see as many differences there. Next slide. So now we can review uh, deliveries to Mexico. The revised draft SEIS does not affect Mexico's all allotments. Water deliveries to Mexico are, are set according to the 1944 Water Treaty and Minute 323. According to Minute 323, Mexico can create water for or take delivery from Mexico's water reserve. The water reserve can be converted into Mexico's recoverable water savings, which offsets savings contributions when Lake Mead is at low elevations. We want to reiterate that the proposed action does affect Lake Mead pool elevations. So this could cause results to be different uh, for modeling reductions from end recoverable savings in Mexico, but that is due to Lake Mead pool elevations and not due to changes in Mexico's allotment. Next slide. So now we can provide a summary of the hydrologic and water delivery modeling. There is still a potential for continued low runoff conditions in the Colorado River Basin, which could lead Lake Powell and Lake Mead to decline to critically low elevations. In the proposed action, the chance of falling below critical elevations through 2026 is, re is reduced compared to the no action alternative. To achieve this, a combination of reduced releases from Lake Powell 
to protect elevation 3,500 feet and lower basin SEIS conservation up to 3 million acre feet are needed. Again, the proposed action does not impose additional mandatory shortage reductions on water users through 2026, but instead assumes SEIS conservation through 2026 up to 3 million acre feet. Next slide. And now I'll hand it over to Genevieve to review the remaining resources. Thank you, Sarah. I'm going to I'm going to provide a quick overview of some of our key resources. In particular, for biological resources, we looked at riparian vegetation, and native and invasive plant species, wildlife in general, and specific special status species. Indicators for impacts on vegetation are based on changes in water elevation that result in changes in vegetation abundance, general location, and plant community composition. For vegetation, both alternatives result in similar impacts from possible decreasing water elevations at Lake Powell and the Glen Canyon Dam to Lake Mead section until 2025. Impacts may include short-term changes to vegetation, an increase in non-native plant species, a loss of suitable habitat for native plant species. However, from 2025 until 2026, the proposed action results in slightly higher water elevations, thereby, thereby exposing fewer acres of shoreline to possible non-native species. And in most scenarios, impacts on riparian vegetation in the Glen Canyon Dam to Lake Mead section and Hoover Dam down to the border with Mexico would be similar for both alternatives until 2026. Analysis of impacts for terrestrial wildlife and special status species are based on that vegetation impact analysis. Impacts on the fish community also incorporate models, results from the GT Max model and USGS smallmouth bass model where applicable. For wildlife and special spat status species, the driest hydrologic futures would result in decreased water elevations that could impact those species through 2025 for both alternatives. Again, from 2025 through 2026, the proposed action results in higher water elevations at Lake Powell and Lake Mead, reducing those impacts compared to the no action alternative. And differences between alternatives downstream of Glen Canyon Dam and Hoover Dam are likely to be minor. Next slide. For cultural resources, we looked at archeological sites around the reservoirs and along the river, as well as Native American traditional cultural properties or TCPs and resources of concern. Impact indicators for this analysis include lake elevations and changes in river flows that could expose historic properties to damage, the availability of windblown sediments to protect archeological sites, effects on traditional cultural properties and changes in access to sacred sites. Both alternatives again result in lake elevations that could further expose resources to damage from wave action, wet and dry cycling, increased visitation and unauthorized collection or vandalism at Lake Mead, but not at Lake Powell. And this is because Lake Powell's elevation is expected to remain above 3,500 feet. This protects those cultural resources below that level. For Lake Mead, the proposed alternative has fewer negative impacts compared to the no action on alternative because pool elevations would be slightly higher under the proposed action and resources at the lake margins would still be vulnerable to wave action and wet dry cycling, while resources above that lake elevation could be subjected to more visitation. For both alternatives, water releases would be within those defined for Glen Canyon Dam Long-Term Experimental Management Plan, or LTEMP, and no additional impacts to archaeological sites under those analyzed and through LTEMP are anticipated. Impacts to traditional cultural properties and resources of concern to Native Americans would be the same under both alternatives. Next slide. The recreation sections look at shoreline public use, reservoir boating, river and whitewater boating, and sports fishing. In the geographic areas at Lake Powell, from Glen Canyon to Lake Mead, at Lake Mead, and from Hoover Dam to the border with Mexico. Shoreline public use is associated with boating facilities, access to points of interest, and other opportunities in each river reach. 
threshold res reserve threshold res water elevations were used as indicators for those recreational facilities that could be impacted and changing in boat boating navigation hazards and navigable areas, as well as changes in any safe boating capacities. River flow data were used to analyze impacts to whitewater boating, such as increased exposure to navigation hazards and changes in access or use of areas or trip duration. And there's also a general discussion about changes in flow and salinity, as well as water temperature to discuss impacts to sports fishing. For recreation at Lake Powell, impacts are similar between both alternatives until 2025. Lake Powell elevations um, may continue to be below critical thresholds for both, both launch facilities, and some new areas of Glen Canyon might be exposed. Sports fish populations, however, are not expected to be impacted. From 2025 to 2026, the proposed action results in a higher maximum proposed reservoir elevation thereby reducing impacts compared to the no action alternative. For recreation downstream of Lake Powell to Lake Mead, daytime flows do not drop lower than safe whitewater boating thresholds. So there would be similar impacts under both alternatives. And lethal limits for rainbow trout are not expected to be exceeded. Um, although we recognize that release temperatures under the proposed action are, uh, could be more variable. For recreation at Lake Mead under the no action alternative, projected reservoir elevations could be below critical thresholds for all boat launch facilities, except for the Pierce Ferry Road launch ramp. And the projected median pool elevation for Lake Mead will likely result in boaters encountering more navigational hazards. Sports fish are not expected to be impacted and impacts under the proposed action are slightly reduced again, due to that projected higher Lake Mead elevation in the proposed action. For recreation downstream of Lake Mead, for both alternatives, there are minimal changes to boating navigation hazards or changes in use or trip duration, and sports fish are not expected to be impacted under either alternative. Next slide. For socioeconomics, we looked at agriculture, recreation, and municipal and industrial use. For agriculture, impact indicators include the acres of fallowed cropland, crop profitability per acre foot of water and jobs and incomes that are associated with agriculture. For both alternatives, the potential exists for some short-term economic losses related to decreases in agricultural production associated with shortages and DCP contribution. Under the proposed action, some agricultural producers would be compensated for these additional decreases and the potential for Lake Mead levels to be higher under the proposed action may also reduce any shortage impacts um, to a variety of agricultural water users. For recreation, the impact indicators include the economic contributions from recreation. And under both alternatives, although the potential exists for reduced economic contributions associated with reservoir boating, the effect is slightly reduced under the proposed action. Uh, River-based recreation is expected uh, to be the same under both alternatives. For municipal and industrial uses, impact indicators reflect the potential for economic impacts due to shortages and depletions in the lower division states. Under both alternatives, the potential exists for domestic water shortages. However, again, the proposed action may reduce those shortage impacts to a variety of the domestic water users by maintaining more water in the system storage in Lake Mead. Next slide. For Indian trust assets, we looked at water rights and trust lands and cultural and biological resources. Impact indicators related to um, Indian trust assets um, include those changes in water allocations due to shortages, access changes to sacred sites and native effects on those traditional cultural properties. Tribal water rights are a matter of settled law. However, annual water deliveries may change as a result of shortages. Water deliveries, shortages, and contributions, which continue to be based on the, on the 2007 interim guidelines and DCP under both no action and proposed action, and under tribes may participate in any voluntary compensated system conservation as part of either alternative. Under the proposed action, long-term water deliveries are projected to be more reliable compared to the no action alternative. For cultural and biological resources, impacts are similar as we previously described for both alternatives. Again, lower river 
levels may expose more cultural resources to visitation and decreases in water elevation may result in short-term changes to riparian vegetation, which includes those increases in um, invasive plant species and loss of native plant species habitat. Note impacts on biological resources for Indian trust assets are expected under either alternative. Next slide. For more information, you can visit our project website, um, which is listed there on the screen. And we will also drop that in the chat for folks to link to. The revised draft SEIS is posted on the project website. And um, if you need a paper copy, those are located at the Lower Colorado Basin and Upper Colorado Basin Regional Offices and Area Offices. You can see the project website for additional information and materials, including how to submit comments, a project overview, an open house information stations, the recording of today's presentation, and any further details. You may send any questions that you have to crinterimops at usbr.gov, or you can also call the project telephone line at 602-609-6739. We'll now walk through a little bit more information and public comment opportunities. There's an interactive web page that you can also access for more information. That interactive web page provides background information and summaries of the revised draft SEIS alternatives and analysis. We'll also drop that link into the chat box for you. And you can scroll down to um, the blue sections and click on topics to explore any background information. Next slide. You can comment on that web form on the project website. You can also, again, if you provide any comments by December 11th um, via email to crinterimops at usbr.gov or leave a voicemail at the, on the telephone line at 602. 609-6739. If you prefer to mail your comments, you can mail them to Reclamation 2007 Interim Guidelines SCIS Project Manager, Upper Colorado Basin Region, 125 South State Street, Suite 8100, Salt Lake City, Utah, 84138. And I'll now turn it over to Meg to walk us through the question and answer session. Great, thank you. And thanks everyone for your attention to the presentation as well as to our presenters. We do now have a few minutes for clarifying questions um, on the presentation. So just a few guidelines there. This is a, a period for clarifying questions. The intent is to help you provide more infor informed comments via those methods that uh, Jenna, you've just went over. So we're not recording any questions um, officially for the record today. And we do ask that you keep questions as focused uh, and succinct as possible so we can answer as many as we can in the time we have remaining today. Just a reminder um, to submit a question to us, click on that Q&A button here in Zoom with the two talk bubbles, and you'll have a box that pops up where you can type in your question, click send, and then we'll see that uh, and either respond live or in that same Q&A box, you may see an answer provided. Looks like we have at least one person on the phone with us today. Um, and if you do have a question from the phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand, um, letting us know that you have a question. And if we see that, we will then call on you and um, give you the opportunity to share your question from the phone. So with that, we're gonna open it up for questions. And there've been a couple that have come in already throughout the presentation. Um, one asking about whether the slides will be posted on the website. And as Genevieve mentioned, they uh, they will, or actually they are already available on the project website. So again, that link is in the chat um, as well as in the Q&A. And then we had one question about uh, cloud seeding and um, the team recommended that person submit a comment on that topic uh, for the team's consideration. All 
right, so a few questions coming in, which is great. And we'll work to get some answers together here for you. All right, while the team is working on some responses, I'm just going to give you a quick tour of that background information page that Genevieve mentioned. So let me just pull that up. Great, so this is an interactive web page provided for this process that provides some more detailed information. Um, for context, it does include a direct link to the draft uh, SEIS text, information about these public meetings, and then has some virtual meeting stations down in this blue section where you can click on specific topics that might be of interest to you, such as project background, the NEPA process, alternatives, modeling and assumptions, tribal engagement, and questions and comments. And then there's also a section on the resources analyzed where you can find out more about those specific resources that might be of interest to you. So again, that link to the interactive web page is in the chat for your reference as well. All right, see a number of good questions here. And our team is reviewing them and we'll have some answers in just a moment. And it's possible we won't get to all the questions before the end of the meeting time today. So I'll just share a, a quick reminder that if you do have additional questions after today's meeting, um, you do have the option to reach out via the CR interim ops at usbr.gov or the project telephone line 602-609-6739 uh, to follow up on anything that we might not have time to get to today. Okay, let's see. Um, All right, if you don't already have that Q&A tool open, go ahead and click on that. We'll have, it looks like there's some answers coming in writing soon. And you'll see responses showing up in the Q&A tool. And I know uh, not everyone can see that because some folks are on the phone, so I'll read them out loud as well once those uh, appear in the Q&A.
Okay, so we did have one question asking, can you point me to or provide the description of the alternative discussed in section 2.8.8? I researched the scoping report, but didn't find a letter or description. And the response there is that a summary of the hydropower prioritization is provided in chapter two of the draft SEIS. That's a summary of public comments. So hopefully that's helpful. And I'll drop the link to the SEIS text in the chat as well for everyone's reference. And I do see the question about where the slides are located on the website, so I'm going to work on getting a direct link to that as well. Just a moment. Okay, it looks like we've got a couple questions for um, verbal response. Genevieve, is that going to be you providing that? Yes, or I'll call on our team as necessary. So I think the, the first question that we have um, for a verbal response is how sensitive are the model results and projected impacts to full federal funding of the proposed action? And what happens if reclamation determines that some of those conservation actions um, will not be funded at the level requested? Um, so the model does include um, all of the 3.0 million acre feet of proposed system conservation uh, through 2026. Um, Based on our current negotiations and discussions with folks in the lower basin, um, we feel that we have a very reasonable um, and practical assumption that we will meet that 3.0 million acre feet by 2026 of system conservation. Um, there's no funded request in the proposed action. Um, so we will continue those negotiations, but um, we are on track to meet that goal. And then I think we also have a question of how would Reclamation's latest projections for 2023 modify the revised draft SEIS compared to using the June 23 projections, at least in terms of trend? Is it a drier or wetter or no difference from 2023? And Sarah is on board to answer that. Yeah, thanks for the question. So compared to current projections, the SEIS modeling is from June 2023 is very similar to what we're currently projecting. If you look at the analysis that we did in the SEIS, it includes a wider range of low flow hydrologies that are not included in our official projections. And so therefore our projections might look a little wetter at the bottom, at the 50th percentile, as well as the minimum that we project um, for the SEIS modeling. So fairly similar since since June, there hasn't been much change. The forecast, though, um, observed flows maybe were slightly wetter from the June 2023 forecast to the end of the water year. Great. And then there was a question about the releases from Lake Mead, similar to Glen Canyon 
all releases from slide 34. Um, and you've noted that those river and flow releases are summarized in chapter three. Um, I'll also just jump back to slide 34 so you can see that one again. Um, you know, we went through a lot of detailed information and appreciate the question about the direct link to the slides as well. We're working on that. Okay, great. Uh, looks like Kathy's going to provide a response on the next question. And if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, Kathy. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kathleen Foster. I am the LTEMP SEIS project manager, and I will be answering the following question. Since there are cumulative effects identified for hydropower stemming from the LTEMP SEIS, when and where will those impacts and potential mitigation be identified? So the LTEMP SEIS is still under development. Um, we are just working on the scoping comments and we plan to address direct and indirect impacts and any associated mitigation as we uh, go through this process. Um, as it stands now, we are planning to have a draft SEIS released in early 2000. 24. Great. Thank you. All right, I did get that direct link to slides, so you should see that in the chat as well as the Q&A. And we're getting close to the end of our time here, but I think we might have one more to respond to. Just double checking here. Appreciate all the good questions you're keeping of our team busy here in the background. <laughs> All right, I know we are at our scheduled meeting end time, so I'm going to, I know some folks may have to leave. I'm going to turn it to Genevieve um, to offer some closing remarks, um, just in case folks are heading out. Yeah. Thank you, Meg, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, again, please feel free to send your questions or comments in um, 
to see our interim ops at usbr.gov. Get you can uh, download the draft document um, as well as find other resources on our website, which is listed on the page. Um, we look forward to your continuing participation in this process um, and want to thank you for sticking through this with us for the past year. I hope everybody has a wonderful Friday and a great weekend. And with that, I think we will close today's meeting. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank for your... We are adjourned. <laughs>